The Gundam NT-1 Alex, hailing from the 1989 six-episode Gundam OVA, A War in the Pocket. A prototype Gundam mobile suit designed for use by new types, hence the moniker NT-1. This was a Gundam built specifically for use by the original Gundam protagonist, Amaro Ray, but instead... Hamburger. This isn't Bandai's first time making this classic suit as a master grade. This is the NT-1 2.0. This kit is essentially perfect in every way. It's solid, features fantastic articulation, nice accessories, the entire set of Chobam armor to convert it into the full armor Alex, including the head armor that in the past only featured on an SD kit. This kit right here is gold tier without a doubt, and you're gonna want two of them. Let's check it out. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review and today I'm taking a look at this, the Master Grade Gundam NT-1 Alex. As usual, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, so if you want an NT-1 Alex of your own, then check out that link down there in the description. Now here we go! So that right there is what the Master Grade Alex looks like out of the box just snapped together with a little bit of panel lining up on the head and shoulders and some of the decals applied. Not much effort at all and pretty much what you'll see out of the box. But before I actually go into the details of this model kit more, I will mention that this is from the anime OVA, A War in the Pocket. It's only six episodes long and if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend that you do. It's a very nice short, well-paced anime that takes a more intimate look at the effects of the One Year War on regular people and how whether being a Xeon or Federation soldier doesn't necessarily make you good or bad. That and hamburgers. So first off, starting with a quick spin of the finished kit, and all I can say is this is one deceptively simple looking kit. On the first look, it's a very standard old school looking Gundam right here, but it does have a few extra new features. They have really removed the 80s-ness that the original design had. That long, thin V-fin, that super wide shoulder to waist ratio. What we've got here is more of a standard boxy looking Gundam. Very similar to the Granddaddy RX-78 too. Some of the features you might miss on first glance is that the clear parts here are in the color they should be, which is green. If you do want to custom paint this, that is a bit of a problem, of course. The option to use a sticker is included. As for the stickers, all that comes in here is that one for on the head camera as well as the eyes. Always a great sign, it means the color accuracy is on point and that we're not missing any huge chunks of color anywhere. So all in all, looking good, really damn good. The NT1 does have those wrapped shoulders, as you can see in there. This is pretty similar to what we would have seen on uh, this guy. So I'll just pop off the shoulder to show that a little bit clearer. So this right here is a kind of material that I can only describe as trash bag-esque. Like it's made out of garbage bag. It does do exactly what it's supposed to, but it is kind of funny. The thrusters around here on the back, as well as the Gatlings inside of the forearms have been given a coating of a metallic silver paint, which does look pretty. Damn good, honestly. Some very nice color separation in those tiny little thrusters. The yellow on white looks good. Same goes for that little V in the crotch there. I always love to see that color separated. The Alex does feature layered armor. We can see that here in the arms. These are all actual different plates. And all in all, visually, this does look fantastic. In the box as well, we also get a huge bunch of decals. Sadly, these are just sticker style decals, so they don't look that great on. We have a lot of those. I did apply some and as you can see because these are stickers there is a bit of an outline on those that you can see all the time. Especially here on the blue that doesn't look too great. And one thing that gets me is like what is this? UNT Spacey? Macross? I mean seriously you can't just stick a T in there and steal someone else's idea. At least in Macross it makes sense because it's United Nations Spacey. Spacey's a bit silly. Being like a space defense force I guess Spacey whatever but with this. It stands for Under Normal Tactics Special Assortment Construction Yard. Yeah, that's stupid. So whoever wrote A War in the Pocket went a little bit crazy with acronyms. For example, we've got the Chobam Armor, which stands for Ceramics Hybrid Outer Shelled Blow Up Act On Materials. And as for Alex itself, that's Armored Layers Experimental, so someone likes acronyms. Lastly then, NT1 itself of course is for new type because this was a mobile suit designed to be used by Amuro Ray, which it never was. And speaking of which, there's a quick size comparison to the Granddaddy 3.0 as well as 
Master Grade Gundam The Origin. So I will mention here, you can see that these hands are not the same as these, so they opted not to use the big perfect grade hands. That does sort of make me happy. They can be a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes. However, I will mention that I always thought the NT1 here would be that little bit bigger than the standard granddaddy, but it seems to come in at in and around the same size. And as for some more Amaro size comparisons, there it is beside the high new Gundam as well as the new Gundam, both of which completely dwarf it. So now moving on to the accessories, and there's the Master Great Alex with absolutely everything that it comes with. And damn, that's a lot of stuff. So first off, I'll mention there's three forms to this. The standard Gundam, the Gundam with the inner walls of the armor, and finally then the Gundam with the Chobam armor on. So that is what all these parts here are. The inner parts as well as the outer parts of the armor, and then when it comes to accessories on top of that, we've got that variant broken V-fin. This kit features swappable finger style hands. As for weapons, what we've got is a pair of standard beam sabers, the beam rifle, bazooka, and then what we've got is two pilot figures, neither of which are Christina, it's actually Bernie and Alfred. Christina is actually in the cockpit though. And finally, we've got that base adapter. Whoa, somehow I almost forgot the shield. So as you can see, that right there is a whole lot of stuff. So as for the hands, these are those type with a thumb, which features one point of articulation and swappable hands. So of course, we've got those fists that you can see right there. Next up, a pair of widespread open hands. And I will mention that these attach on like so, in the exact same way as the fists did, but the weapon holding hands actually attach a little bit differently. Those have that little slot in the bottom. The widespread holding hands, they have that tab. The fists there also feature the same tab. So when you want to attach the weapons, those particular hands don't go into the tab section there. They actually slide over the entire section like so. So these are definitely unique. I've never seen anything quite like these before. So anyway, we've got a pair of beam rifle holding hands and a pair of standard holding hands. As for the equipment, first up, we've got a standard pair of beam sabers. These are pretty bog standard. They attach into the standard holding hands, just like you can see right there. So that's what the NT1 will look like in a pose with both of those beam sabers. And when they're not in use, just pull out the beam and they attach into the backpack just like that right there. So next up then is the beam rifle. This is pretty simple looking. The detailing is nice, but it is all one color besides that one little bit of barely seeable green in there for the side. But all in all, it is pretty simple. It is in that kind of purplish color as a lot of the joint parts of the inner frame are, and it does feature a removable <laughs> E-cap magazine that just pops in like that. This attaches in pretty simply, you use that hand segment with the trigger finger, and this right here is why this is a slot style as opposed to a peg. Sometimes it can be hard to attach these kind of fingers when they're holding the weapon by pushing them in that way. So actually, this new design of them just sliding onto that peg is so much easier. This I like a lot. Next up then is the shield. This is quite simple looking at first. Just the same blue and white as the mobile suit. Some of the decals have been applied there. Around on the underside then we've got the same purplish color on these inside parts, but this is deceptively simple again, just like the mobile suit. A lot is going on here. So first off, here's the attachment points for attaching it onto the back of the arm, which we'll look at in a minute. But on top of that, we do have this moving handle here, which can attach into the standard holding style fingers. But this features an opening gimmick as well as a standard shield sliding gimmick. So this does open up to use the Gatling gun with the shield. So it just pops out and up, simple as that. So that is pretty cool. That closes up like that, then closes there. And all in all, that is pretty cool. I thought it'd be flimsy, but it isn't. So let's try that out in the arm. So that just clips on up there, pushes into the slot, holds on very, very nicely. You don't have to put this into the hand, but you can if you want. That'll just come forward and into the hand like that. You get out of the way. So that is pretty damn awesome. It does mean that the Alex is able to fire that Gatling gun in there without unequipping its shield. That's damn cool. But anyway, there is an example pose of what it will look like with the beam rifle and that shield attached with the Gatling gun ready, aiming and firing. All in all, I have to say this is one pretty awesome gimmick. So next up then is the bazooka. This is the only thing in this kit that reuses parts from an older kit. Everything else is brand new for this kit right here. This is a variant of 2008's RX-78-2's bazooka. 
This one here is fitted with a scope with that nice little clear green piece in it. Besides that, it doesn't really do a whole lot, just tilt forward and back at the handle. Just like any standard bazooka. There is a bit of a look at what it will look like equipped on the Gundam Alex once it's in a pose. Looking pretty cool. And when it is not in use, you can flip out this little segment back here and attach that on here onto the butt flap. And speaking of attaching to butt flaps, we also have pretty much all of the RX 78 beam rifle in here. It's just missing the little segment that pops in here, but that has the same butt flap attachment point. So this thing is extra. Next up then in here we do have an alternate antenna, so that was the standard one right there, off it comes. And there is the alternate one, of course this is the one with one half of it broken off, just like in the anime. Of course we've got the pilot figure of Alfred running and pointing, as well as the 1-100 pilot figure of Bernie, sitting on, well, nothing. So before I actually tackle this big old pile of armor here, let's do the articulation. So as usual, starting from the head down. So straight away the neck is probably the most disappointing joint on this thing. That's up, that's down, we've got a bit of side to side tilt, it's not a whole lot. It spins all the way around, and it's got a paltry basic giggity giggity, so this could be a little bit better. At the shoulder it can come out and forward like this. It cannot move backwards. The shoulder armor can move up ever so slightly. There's that arm all the way up. Full 360 rotation at the shoulder there. Full rotation here at the upper arm. There is the bend at the elbow. Very nice. This does feature that layered armor which does move with the bend which is very nice. We have a second point of rotation down here at the forearm. Of course the whole section back here opens out to get into that Gatling gun. And this kit right here really does have quite the wrist, so we've got a ball joint in there. We have another joint in there which allows that segment to move in and out like that. The wrist can pivot at that point. Very, very nice. And of course we've got rotation at that ball joint, and that thumb is articulated. The cockpit can open two different ways. The first is just like that. There is the pilot figure of Christina inside. The other way then is this little red door segment. This opens up just like so. Closes up like that can be a little bit awkward at times. The design of the ab crunch on this is great. It's two different points. One inside of the torso, the other is this little rocking mechanism at the hips here. So that means we have this joint up here which allows for that and that segment which allows for that. So a combination of both does give you a very nice ab crunch for such a blocky Gundam. Pretty cool. The skirting armor flips up at the front just like that. They can also pivot side to side here. We've got an opening segment here for attaching the armor. The side skirting doesn't do a whole lot, it's pretty much just that. There is no rotation here because of the kind of joint it is. And back here we do have a premium butt flap but these do move up and down together. The hip joint in here is pretty standard. This doesn't feature any kind of dropping mechanism, it's just a fixed point. And there is the kick you get all the way up to the front so that is pretty damn good. Because this moving butt flap I expect it to be pretty good to the back and yes it is. As for the splits, there it is all the way out so this can go the whole way up but it will knock off the side skirting armor. Like I mentioned, they attach onto this extremely basic joint. So the armor up here does block that full rotation at the upper leg when it's close in to the midpoint like this. When you bring it out, you can get that full rotation sort of, but that armor does get in the way. There is that bend at the knee, so that is pretty good. These thrusters are fixed, so it's not like the Sinanju or anything like that, no movement there. At the ankle here, we've got a ball joint up here, as well as this cleverly designed joint down here. So this allows the foot to move separate to the ankle here and gives us that pivot right there. As for the functional movement at the ankle for ground poses, if you tuck this in under that armor, you get quite a lot to the front. That is impressive. As for out to the back, that's what we get again. Quite damn good there. As for to the outside, not too much there before it gets blocked, but you wouldn't really want too much there. As for all the way into the inside, that is what we get, so that is one impressive ankle joint. Lastly, as for the toes, there they are all the way down, not a whole lot, and there they are bent all the way up, so pretty good. So all in all, I have to say the articulation on this is fantastic. It's really damn good, 
And the fact that the build is so sturdy while the articulation is so good is very impressive. While I was filming this part right here that you can see right now, I did drop it off this wall, which is a five foot drop onto concrete. All that happened was these little segments dropped off this one and this one, and it dropped the bazooka. That's it. Otherwise, solid as a rock. So that's it for the articulation. Let's armor it up. As for attaching the armor first, you attach on all of this frame, which is in a kind of semi-metallic gray. So it all attaches on simply enough. It all fits on quite sturdy. There's nothing loose or finicky or floppy or feels like it will fall off. This is quite well designed. And the ease of attachment is pretty simple. And I have to say, I'm especially impressed by the hiding of the hard points. So any parts like on the backpack or here, which has hard points for attaching the armor, they're hidden very well with parts that drop down like here and open up like up here. Pretty cool. So there's a quick spin of what this will look like with just the frame on. This is pretty cool. Not quite as cool as the Chobam armor. And speaking of which, let's get on the Chobam armor. As for the Chobam armor itself, I didn't actually think I would like this, but I do. It all attaches on quite smartly. Just like with the frame, it just clips onto that. This right here, of course, is what it looked like in the anime, but this kit does include this awesome mask section that we would have seen before in an SD kit. This really finishes off the whole look. So finally, there is a spin of what it looks like with the Chobam armor equipped, including that helmet section, which really does finish it off, like I said already, and I love the red sections on it. This seriously adds a whole bunch of bulk to the NT1, but it is undeniably plain. It is all just the one color with a little bit of the silver from the frame showing through. The detailing is basic and it just looks like big, huge pieces of plastic, which it is. This kit has suddenly gone from a definitely 2019 look and master grade to something that we could have seen maybe 20 years ago. It is definitely a cool option, a decent reason to buy two instead of one. On the whole though, it is a lot plainer looking than the standard NT1 itself, but still pretty cool. There are a lot of cool functional aspects to this. The cockpit can still open up like so to get into the standard variant of the cockpit. We have little hatches where all these little thrusters are, like that one there, this one up here. Same with the backpack, we've got some opening hatches for the thrusters there. These open up too. The new big butt flap has some extra thrusters for dealing with all the new bulk. On the sides of the legs, these also open up just like that right there so it can use its leg thrusters. I will mention we do lose the ability to mount the bazooka on the butt flap. There is no section here for attaching it, but we can still access those gatlings because this whole segment here is attached to the blue part of the arm, so those open up to allow the NT1 to use the Gatlings while it's equipped with the Chobam armor. So as you'd expect, now that it's the full armor Alex, that does mean a lot of its articulation is blocked by all these large, big, bulky segments. It could be a whole lot worse. That's what we've got there at the knee. That's what we've got at the elbow. The ab crunch has been affected as well. So all in all, you're not gonna get much when it comes to poses with the Chobam armor on. So anyway, there is what it will look like up on your shelf as the full armor, Alex. Is this a reason to buy two of them? I think it might just be. I definitely do find it hard to choose between which mode I'd like to display this as, but in the end, I think I'm gonna stick with the standard Gundam, but I am on the fence about getting a second one. What do you think? Anyway, that right there is it for the review. And all in all, this is one accessory packed kit. And the base Gundam itself is absolutely and utterly fantastic. I love it. So this gets a shining gold tier from me. This kit goes above and beyond what I expect from a standard master grade. The articulation is fantastic. The weapons and accessories are quite cool. I do love the silver paint on the thrusters and the Gatlings and all the gimmicks packed into this little bad boy is insane. It is cool to have the option of the armor frame, then the armor, so it is a reason to buy maybe two if you want to. Both forms look exceptionally cool. And all in all, this is one solid, fantastic master grade. Once again, this is gold tier. So someone is gonna ask, why is this not Gundarium tier? And the simple reason for that is, it does feel like a master grade. It feels like an exceptionally good master grade, but to be Gundarium tier, it has to go so far into the awesomeness spectrum that it no longer feels like the grade that it's meant to be. But this does feel like a master grade, albeit a spectacular one. Anyway, once again, it's gold tier. If you want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, it does help out the channel. 
And as always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time.